Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. This is our third video focused on Langsmith evaluations. Um, so the first video kind of laid out why evals matter and why they're interesting. The second video laid out kind of the core Langsmith primitives that we're working with. So now let's actually dump into some code. Um, so again, this is just the overview of the kind of the eval landscape that we've talked about previously. There's data sets, there's evaluators, there's tasks you care about, and then there's, you know, how do you apply your evals? So all I've done is if you go to smithonlinechain.com, this will be an opportunity to sign up if you haven't already done, all, done so already. I've already signed up, of course. So now this is showing my my workspace, which we're going to talk about later. <laughs> um, I've done some pip installs. Pip install Langsmith, OpenAI, Olama. No Langchain install here. We're just going to work with Langsmith directly. We're not going to involve Langchain at all. Um, so here I'm setting the API key that I got when I signed up. And I'm also setting this other environment variable to enable tracing. And I'm going to define a new project called test. So this light chain project basically sets up a new project that I'm going to work in. And you'll see kind of how that's interesting very shortly. So here's like a first question you might ask. How do I build my own data set, right? It's a very simple, reasonable question to ask. Now, let's say we want to build a data set of question answer pairs for this new blog post on the Databricks model DBRX. Really cool release. State-of-the-art open source LLM. A lot of nice detail in this blog post. Let's say I want to build a question answer data set based on this blog to test the system I have for answering questions in general, right? This is a very popular use case. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is I'm kind of graying out everything we're not focusing on. We're only focusing on manually curated data set. That's it. So what I'm going to do, I've already kind of gone through the post and I've curated a few questions and a few answers to those questions. And this is just a good old pandas data frame. That's it. Now, what I'm doing here is from Lightsmith, I'm importing the client and I'm going to find a new data set, DBRX. So this is the data set I want to work with. And what I'm just, I'm just calling this create data set, giving it a name, giving it a description. I'm passing in the inputs and the outputs that I specified up here. That's it. So I'm running this and that runs. Now here's where I can hop over to Langsmith and I'm going to move this. If I go over to, so you can kind of see a few different categories, projects, annotation queue, deployments. We'll talk about all that later. Don't worry about that for now. Go to data sets and testing. And you can see a whole set of, I have a ton of data sets. I've been doing a lot of work. But let's try DBRX. That's the data set we just created, I think. So here it is. So, okay. We can see created modified. Now let's just click on one of these. We can actually just see, here's the that input question. Here's the answer. And, you know, so that's kind of nice. We can look at our data set here. This test thing tells us have we done any evaluations on it? We've not. Just a set of examples. That's really it. Just pretty nice. Now, let's say I want to update this. So I, I want to add a question. Again, just call create examples, data set name, or ID. There it is. I go back. It shows up. Easy. Now, I also want to say, okay, what are the different data set versions? I can rewind. Okay, that's what it was originally. That's what, it, this is what it is currently after my update. Let's say I wanna edit it. I can actually go to an example. I can edit it here. There we go. Easy enough. Cancel out. That's really it. So we can go back here. What you can see is we defined a set of question answer pairs and we've used the Langsmith SDK to just create a data set from them directly. We've shown that it edited the data set and we've shown that it has versioning. That's kind of it. Now, if we were to go back and if I click on create new data set, I've saved that, that eval CSV. Let's say I want to create a new one. I test data set. I'll call this a key value data set. We talked about that previously. The inputs and outputs are just key value pairs, question answer. You can see it's kind of all automatically populates. Boom. And there it is. I have it from a CSV as well. So that's really it. It's super simple. Um, I've defined my inputs, my outputs. I've used the client to create a data set. I've edited it. I've shown how to look at the versions. I've shown how to create a data set from a CSV using the UI. That's really it. Again, that's the foundational piece of building developer curated ma or manually curated data sets. And we're going to be talking about kind of how to build on this next.